There's so many people that don't even hear the birds. I was out for three days and, and the Lord was speaking to me and, and he told me, just praise me, just glorify me, just praise me, don't don't be ashamed. And, and I remember in my dream I was saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and then I just woke up. Brother Albert, so good to have you. Amen. Thank you for having Thank me. You. It's an honor. Thank you it's for being honor. with us. And uh, I want you to just, uh, if you would, uh, share with us what God has done in you okay. and for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for this opportunity. It's great. And I just pray that whoever's listening to it will really get something out and believe in God. That's my first primary service of doing this. It's not for me, it's for the glory of God. Absolutely. Born and raised in New York City. Um, I came from a family of four and uh, my family was alcoholics and my father wasn't there and uh, my mother was very abusive to me and um, I ran the streets. I had to survive, that's what it was about. And uh, many days, I, you know, uh, I just thought I was going to die, you know. I, I, I give God the honor that I'm 63 uh, and, and, and I'm here, you know. Uh, my mom's passed away in 2005. Uh, uh, I preached her funeral. Well, let me go back a little bit. Uh, at the age of 14, I left home. I've been on my own since the age of 14. Uh, a lot of my family members, the male family members, was big time drug dealers and they made movies out of them and they raised us up like that. So I, I, I raised in the street and doing things, I, I robbed, I stole, I bathed, I borrowed, <laughs> I did everything. You know, right. at the, It was kind of rough at the age of 14, yeah. hanging in the streets in New York City. You know, yeah. I slept in Port Authority, Penn Station, I slept in parks, cardboard boxes, uh, I went days without eating food. Wow. You know. Um, uh, just drinking water just to get full, you know, right. not knowing uh, where I was going to live or what was going to happen. Then uh, the way I stayed in school was um, I had to prostitute myself to the females, the older ladies, you know. Um, they would come to the school and say they was my legal guardian, you know, right. and they wanted favors. And when they got tired of me, one kicked me out, I went back to another one. So that's how I remained in school. I didn't use drugs until late drugs came into my life. And um, I did a lot of things. I was thrown out of windows, had hot grease thrown on me. I always fought. My uncles taught me how to fight, no, never run. And, uh, if right. you look at my arm, I got scars, old battle wounds. I call them my tattoos. Right. And uh, I, I ran the streets. I mean, I know what it is to really be helpless, homeless. And, and I, I realized that uh, uh, I, I didn't have no end. I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I didn't know anything. You know, uh, It was just survival. What's the matter? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll bring you some food tomorrow. All right? All right. You be my friend. Bye. <laughs> My sister was in the hospital dying of AIDS. And um, I used to take time out my criminal activity. I laugh when I say that. I come, my criminal activity to go see my sister every day in the hospital. This last time I went to see her, she was sitting up. She went blind. And when I came in the room, she said, Albert. I said, what? She said, why you do so many things? And those was her last words. Wow. And I told the nurse, my sister's sleepy. She want to lay down. Put her to bed. They said, no, sir, she inspired. I said, she ain't inspired. She's sleepy. She been sitting up all day. Lay her down. And I left the house and I was crying. I got on the train and I was behind this building. I don't remember getting off the train. I was behind this building crying. I looked up. It was this church. the Times Square Church. And I walked in the church. I sat down. I don't remember the sermon. All I remember, the pastor saying, anybody want to give their life to God? I was the only one that that day that gave his life to God. The power of the presence of Jesus. It's an absolute necessity that God's people have and maintain the presence of the Lord at all times in their lives. So when you have to get connected to God and see that and you get that connection and you get that feeling with God that can make your peace, that can make that joy, that, that, un that joy that nobody can't take away. That's the joy. Look at Jesus. No one could take away his joy. No one could take away his peace because he said he was connected to the Father. I went to a Times Square Church and I went to a 
Timothy House. They had a Timothy House in, in Spanish Harlem. I stayed there 90 days, and after I gra uh, graduated there, I went to Bible College. Wow. Uh, they changed the name, said there was Mount Zion Bible College, now it's called the Summit in Granville, Pennsylvania. I stayed there, I graduated, I came back home, and uh, I was just gun ho for God, you know. I thought I knew it all, you know, but the devil was waiting for me right there, right. you know. He, right. he had his hands, and um, I had to uh, run from people. I literally ran from people to not give them the time of day. I had the Bible right here, and they would call me, hey, big man, what's going on, how you doing? And I would run. They thought I was crazy or high, but I wasn't. I was running to save my life right. because I knew if I gave them a fraction of a second, they could talk me back into doing things. I wasn't strong enough then. So you were just shunning the yeah. appearance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so after yeah. that, I um, uh, went to Jersey. You know, I got four kids and uh, went to be with my kids and went back to my kid's mother. And she told me, she said, I don't know why you came here. I'm not accepting you. So this is after I came out of college. Yeah. I think I was doing all right. She, uh -huh. she didn't accept me. Uh -huh. I was homeless. Yeah. I was sitting at the bus stop with all my luggage saying, what am I going to do? And this man came to me. He said, uh, what's wrong? I said, I told him, he said, come with me. It was a pastor, and he took me in. Wow. And that was the first beginning of me seeing God move in my life. Hey! <laughs> I was going to that church, and I used to stand on the corner every day, every Sunday morning, and give out tracks. Wow. And this man came across the street, and he said, hey, let me give you one of them tracks. I gave him a track, and he said, uh, What's your desire? I said, to help the less fortunate and the homeless. He said, that's my church across the street. He said, you know me? I said, no, sir, I don't, I don't, I don't know you. He said, I'm your dad. I said, nah, you ain't my dad. I don't even know my dad. You ain't my dad. But that's how I met my dad. And he, wow. was, a, and he was a pastor and we hooked up. Wow. I'm going to call you later. OK. All right, love you. All right, love you too. Bye. I was preaching on the corner. It was a, it was a drug rehab right there, and I was preaching. Had my little microphone, I'm preaching, and I'm yeah. preaching fire. And the uh, drug users was passing the drug dealers by going into the rehab. <laughs> so when God told me to finish, pack up, I, I just started walking. All I remember, I heard a big boom. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. Wow. Uh, and the doctors told me that, he said, uh, you're never gonna walk. And I told him, I said, doctor, believe me, I'm gonna walk. If I walk with a crutch or a cane, but I'm gonna walk out here. And, uh, I did my therapy and the rehab and everything, and I, I walked out, you know. Yeah. But I still have little complications, but it's nothing compared to, right. but it's for the glory of God. I got mad at God. I was I was angry at God for a while because I said, God, how could you allow this to happen to me when I'm doing your work? And God just took me on a deep, I don't know, it was a revelation about the disciples and how they died. And, and they died for the glory of God. And a big burst of joy came. I said, I took a bullet for Jesus. Yeah. I took a bullet for <laughs> Jesus. But you know, Paul talks about the thorn in his flesh. Yeah. He never said what it was. And we only can speculate that it was his eyes or whatever. But a lot of people don't know they thorn in it. But I know mine from my bullet, from the bullet me being shot. I have a limp. Yeah. You know, and I can't hardly lift my arm up, but that's the remembrance of who God is. Yeah. I was out for three days, and, and the Lord was speaking to me, and, and He told me, "Just praise me, just glorify me, just praise me. Don't don't be ashamed." And and I remember in my dream, I was saying, "Yes, Lord, yes, Lord," and then I just woke up. After I got shot, but some years later, about three years later, I was out eating with some friends, and we was eating, and. Uh, I bit on something. I was like, wow, what is this? I, I thought it was something in the food. And, it, and I bit it was a bullet. Wow. And it was a 22. And people, I don't know nothing about being shot or nothing, but they said, me a 22. They said, you're really blessed. I said, why? I said, because a 22 ricochets. Yes, know, it does. Like, I, I don't know. Yes, I don't know nothing about that, you know. And yes. I was like, wow, you know, wow. The only thing that happened that I had a punctured lung. Okay. And that was the most painful thing of anything. Yes. My lung being punctured. Yes. But uh, I kept the bullet for a long time, but in me traveling somewhere, it got missed. But the bullet that... That the spiritual bullet that I remember, you know, who did it, you know, because the Holy Spirit told me to don't let them do surgery. And I didn't understand it, but I didn't let them do surgery. Wow. But because God, now that I found out, God already knew that the bullet was going to come out. Wow. You know, and, and those things right there draws me closer to God. There's nothing that no one can do to get me to go against God, to go Amen. back to the world. Nothing. I don't care what nobody say or what their belief is. I know what I went through. I know who saved me. 
The only way I survived what I've been through in my young hood, it had to be God. So when I came to him, I realized that he was there with me before I even knew him. Yeah. And how much more now that he's going to be with me. Amen. Because it's through him that I, I mean, 14 years old, a young kid, going through the things that I, that I went through and experienced, you know, I should be crazy and, and yes. or dead or somewhere. Yeah. But, you know, I use all those things and all those points to, to encourage people not to give up because it's so easy to give up. My mind went back to one of our prayer lines one day and I answered the prayer line and the voice on the other end said, I'm in a motel, I have a pistol in my hand and I want you to tell me one reason why I don't put it to my head and pull the trigger. And all I could say to him was Jesus. And I just started saying Jesus to him over that phone line and I was able to lead him to the Lord. But maybe maybe there's a, a, a young man, a young lady, a middle-aged man, middle-aged lady, that maybe they're facing some of the things that you're facing. And I, I want you to just look into this camera and I want you to pray for them. Pray for them right now. It may be someone out there that really need to hear this and maybe at their wit's end and thinking that there's no way out. And I, I just want to encourage you, don't give in, don't give out. It's not an option. But I just want to pray for you and pray Amen. for the parents and pray for the loved ones, pray for everybody. Not only those that are chemically substance controlled under some influence, but those that are, are being affected mentally by their son or daughter or yes. husband or wife yes. going through this. Absolutely. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We just glorify you. We just lift you up. Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I come to you not on my behalf, but on the behalf of someone out out there that's yes. going through something that yes. really needs you, that you can make a way for them, Lord God. Someone thinking yes. about suicide, someone thinking about just throwing in the towel, someone don't even know how to fight this battle by themselves, Lord God. Yes. Someone that thinking they got it all done and they can do it, Lord God. And they, that that's in in a in a in a world of confusion and, and Satan has them bound. And I come across that spirit right now. I Amen. bind and rebuke Amen. that spirit. I come against that suicide spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, you Lord. said you never leave them, never forsake them. you never seen your seed begging bread right now. Lord God, help them, Lord God. Send someone to them, Lord God. Yes. You know how to do it better than I can, Lord God. Yes. Send them and let them know, Lord God, that you hear their prayers, that their prayers haven't fallen on deaf ear. The mother and the father that don't know what to do because yes, they see their son or their daughter or their niece or their nephew being abused through this addiction or whatever kind of addiction it is right now, Lord Lord God, you know you they need help. You Amen. said, Lord God, in your word, it isn't the, the well that need a physician. It's the sick that need a physician. Amen. And you yes. are the great physician, Lord God. Yes. So send your warring mm -hmm. angels, your ministering angels, your guiding angels, your loving angels, your heads of protection angels upon them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Pour out your spirit on everything that they hear. Let them be a witness to it, Lord God. Your impartation, your manifestation upon them, Lord God. Just give them a glimpse of what you have for them, Lord God. Amen. Oh, Father, right now, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, have your way. We just ask for your will to be done in their life, Lord God. Right now, and Satan, I command you. I'm not asking you, but I'm commanding you by the by the authority that invested in me from Jesus Christ Amen. that you put down your weapons and flee, and you take your hands and you can't have them. Yes. We Amen. snatch them back into the kingdom of God. Amen. I plead the blood over them right now. I rebuke Amen. you right now. You spirit of suicide. You spirit of addiction. You spirit of prostitution. You yes. envy spirit. You jealous spirit. You hateful yes. spirit. Yes. I bind it right now back to the pit of hell where it belongs. Amen. And I Amen. pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Listen, we love you today. Uh, we want to ask you to continue to pray for Exodus ministry, that God would be with them. Continue to pray for your neighbors, pray for your loved ones, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through. As Brother Albertson prayed, we serve a God that's able to carry you through every bit of it. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you again real soon. God bless. <laughs> That's it. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.